Oscar Bevis, Rafael TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted today to be joined by San Antonio's 19-0 lightweight, El Finito, Hector Tanahara. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you for having me. No, it's our pleasure. First time on the channel, so obviously welcome. Um, you're fighting on July the 24th, Mercito Gesta. Um, I'm going to come on to that in a sec, but just tell me about the last few months for yourself. You did manage to squeeze a fight in at the start of the year. But um, yeah, a little bit of stopping the momentum bit frustrating but uh looking forward to getting back in i imagine yeah you know i was fortunate enough to get a fight in this year in january before uh this whole pandemic but uh other than that it's just i feel like uh i tell people it's been like a long training camp you know uh can't go nowhere everything's closed uh just stay at home uh that's all i was doing i was still working out just staying ready for you know whenever i got the call for a fight did it give you time to think as well and think about perhaps things not just that you want to improve on but mentally things you can work on going forward uh, perhaps what you want to achieve in your career what you want to leave the sport having achieved as well yeah definitely you know um, this this whole thing uh, makes you think you know uh, about your future and uh, what uh, what you're doing so definitely I was thinking about uh, my future and um, just boxing too you know uh, boxing and outside of boxing you know both this whole pandemic has been, uh, has opened my eyes. So, uh, you know, I know I got to work harder uh, in order to to make uh, my dreams come true and uh, just always, just always work hard. Like I said, July uh, the 24th, you'll be fighting. Before we come on to Mercito and sort of his past and how you think the fight will go, boxing's coming back quite slowly. We're seeing obviously less boxing than we would normally. There'd be shows and like five in the US, five in the UK and a lot of boxing to concentrate on. Because there's less to concentrate on. There might be a lot of eyes on you. Is there a little bit of pressure, do you think, to, to perform? No, it's not pressure. You know, um, I'm glad to be opening up the first show for The Zone and, and Golden Boy uh, first show back. Um, but I don't think there's no pressure. You know, I think it's going to help me, actually. Uh, I mean, stay more focused in the ring, you know, uh, more focused on the tasks that I have at hand. Uh, I know I got a, a tough fight, so... Uh, I'm just ready to show uh, to show everybody. I know a lot of people are going to be tuned in, so I'm ready to show all the fans. Yeah, Mercy to obviously durable, been in with Jorge Linares, Miguel Vasquez, mix it at that top level. Is he sort of the perfect opposition for you at this time in your career? Yes, definitely. I think he's, you know, the perfect uh, fight for me right now in my career. A good step up. Uh, like you said, he's a durable guy. He's been in there with some, some great fighters. He fought for the world title. So uh, I think this is a good fight for me to show uh, – my level and that hopefully after this fight, you know, uh, some big doors open for me. And what do you need to show? What do you need to show the boxing public, perhaps not just in this fight, but for the rest of 2020? What do you want to show people that, you know, Hector Tanahara is good at what you can do and, and what you can achieve? Just basically, I'll, I think I'll class my opponents, you know, show that they, that they don't belong in there with me. Um, I think uh, after this fight, it will show, you know, that I belong in the, in the top names in my division. Yeah, because when it comes to your division, obviously, there's quite a lot of attention at the moment on 135 and stateside, or especially from, from a UK perspective, people will look at Devin mm -hmm. Haney, Ryan Garcia, Tiafimo Lopez. But, um, yeah, do you want to put yourself in the bracket with those guys because you believe you're, you're alongside them? Yes, yeah, sir, exactly. You know, uh, I think after this fight, too, my name should be uh, mentioned or hopefully I fight one of those top guys in my division. Like I said, going to want to go into your background a little bit because it's the first time on the channel. Get some Brits knowing a little bit about you. Your father, Hector Tanahara Sr. I mean, I could imagine that as a kid you were perhaps pushed into boxing rather than it's something you, you wanted to go into at first. Would I be right in saying that? Uh, Yeah, you, you're right. Um, He's the one, you know, I always watch boxing, so I grew up watching it with him. Um, And he took me to the gym first. I mean, I, I wanted to go too, but... You know, he's the first one that took me, you know, made that push. And uh, I think after that, I just, you know, I just fell in love with the sport. I just wanted to go every day. Uh, I remember even after my first sparring session, I mean, my first fight, uh, I got beat up. <laughs> he's like, you sure you still want to box? I was like, yeah, I still want to do this. So, uh, so just, you know, he was the one that made the push. And after that, uh, I just kept going every day. Well, I mean, you haven't been beaten up in the pro game yet, so you're obviously good at your craft. When did you realise, look, this is something I could actually sort of dedicate my life to and, and make a living out of? Uh, probably when uh, I started getting in my late teenage years, um, around uh, probably 16, 17. Um, I started, uh, you know, winning some national tournaments, uh, travelling with Team USA. So then that's when uh, 
you know, I had the dream of, of turning pro and becoming world champion one day. So uh, I think that's the, around that time is when I said, you know, I, I could actually do this. What sort of guys were you travelling with sort of in that, in that time period when you were with Team USA? Uh, I travelled with Shakur, um, Ruben Villa, Alexis Rocha, um, uh, Darmani Rock. Uh, who else? Um, I fought a lot of the Olympians too from this last Olympics, but uh, I traveled to a, a, f- a few times with with those guys. And obviously, when you're just, I suppose, even being around them, I know them guys would have progressed, and you've progressed yourself and all become sort of into that man strength as professionals. But even when you're as, as amateurs together, I can imagine you're sort of taking all that advice and all that knowledge from each other. Yeah, exactly. You know, everyone's, you know, helping each other at that point. You know, we're young. Um, it's, we're all, we've seen each other at all the tournaments and stuff. So, you know, like you said, we're all taking advice from each other and uh, helping each other uh, a little bit, you know, at that time too. And was it in the amateur days that El Finito came about? Where's that? I mean, is it finisher? Also, I mean, obviously it's not English. So is it, is it finisher? Uh, no, I think it's uh it's it's Spanish. I think it's like a uh, like smooth, right? Smooth. Um, when I was in the in the silver gloves tournament, um, I was fighting one of my fights. I'm not sure against who, but uh, I guess I was boxing real real good, real smart. And uh, one of my uh friends, Aaron Morales, his dad uh told my dad, you know, he was he's looking like a El Finito. And then after that, my dad liked the name, so it stuck. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely catchy and uh. Yeah, El Finito it is. Um, so then you progress into the pro game, obviously, sign now with Golden Boy, and you're making waves um, in the States and, and for those for Golden Boy as well. What was it like when you first started out your career? Because obviously, being a good amateur is one thing and travelling with Team USA, but when you switch it up to the pro game, I mean, you don't fight the top guys immediately. But, you know, when you was in with these sort of grown men immediately, um, yeah, it must have been a bit difficult at first, or did you find the transition pretty smooth? Um... At first, you know, I think I found it kind of smooth, pretty smooth. Um, I was uh, getting some good sparring in, so I think that was helping me transition to the pros. You know, I was sparring a lot of pros, so it helped me relax more in there and uh, be more smart in the ring, be more calm in the ring. So uh, I think I transitioned pretty well. Tell us about when you got the call, when, you know, you knew you was going to sign with Golden Boy because you can go into the pro game and, there'll be people who may be the most talented boxers in the world that we won't get to see because they won't have the, the promotional backing. You've got the promotional backing, so it's all there on a plate for you. But when you first signed for Golden Boy, can you tell us about the whole story and how it came about? Yeah, you know, um, I won the U.S. Nationals, and um, that's when uh, Robert Garcia, you know, they already had been, his son Peter already had been looking, kind of scouting us, and he saw, uh, well, he's seen me fight before that, but then they saw me win the Nationals. And um, that's when, you know, uh, Robert shouted me out and then we got in contact. And um, at first we were going to go for the, I was still going to try the the Olympic trials. At first we had a meeting about that. And then and then we thought about it, you know, and then we're like, you know, uh, might as well just turn pro, you know, how there's politics and stuff like that and amateurs. So uh, uh, we decided to turn pro and Robert said he'll, he'll try to get us a deal. And, uh, we were fortunate enough he got us a deal with, with Golden Boy. And I um, remember we came to L.A. to come sign, went back, and I still had like a week left of high school or, or something like that. And it was I was just acting like normal, you know. Uh, I mean, it was a big thing. It was a huge thing for me. That was my, my dream come true. But I was just acting, you know, like like a normal kid, like nothing happened. So, uh, But deep down, I was, you know, really happy and, and excited to, to get my pro career started. What was you not walking around the school bragging? That's what I'd have been doing. I'd have been telling nah, them. Nah. <laughs> nah, like um, I really kn- I knew I had got signed, so like I'm sure you know a lot of people at that age they're not making money like that. But I was still, I was still the same, like acting like nothing happened. So I was still, still calm and chill. <laughs> and obviously, let's just fast forward straight to now. I mean, you've been on cards with Jaime Munguia, uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr., Joshua Franco, another San and boy just become world champ. So again, just mixing that company, being on these big shows, and you know, I spoke to you earlier about you got Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, and guys people will mention, but you are slowly building your way up, and a few more fights, and you could be in that mix that people talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I find some great cards, and um, 
I think uh, the best of me is, is still coming, you know. Uh, I'm still transitioning, still getting better, still getting stronger. So uh, I think uh, the fans will see that in the next couple of fights and hopefully soon, you know, I get a shot at one of those big names. And what one of the big names? What one do you see at the moment is the most beatable? Um, well, they're all great fighters, but I think the easiest easiest fights to make are with the zone, you know, either Ryan or uh, Devin Haney. Is there either? I mean, I know you've had a bit of a back and forth with Ryan. What do you make that, actually? Because when you said to Ryan at first that, what was it, you, didn't you say that you thought he might have been overhyped or something, and Ryan come back with a jealousy tag as well. Um, is there anything there between you and Ryan, or, or is it just sort of a little bit of heat that hopefully we might get to see? Dust it off in the ring soon. No, nothing personal. You know, I just, just I just want to get those big fights. You know, um, those are the fights that I want. Uh, those big names, the the ones that people, you know, hype up and stuff like that. So, uh, those are the fights that I want, and I believe I can win. You feel like in this day and age, you have to sit there and say, "Look, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that," just to get those fights. Uh, I feel, I don't feel like you, I mean, your work should, should, uh, you know, tell everything, but at the same time, people, people fall into that and people believe, you know, all that hype. So, I mean, you got to say a little something, I think now to, to get some fights like that. Yeah. And one, three, five is definitely a division where you've got people who don't mind, uh, don't mind any of the talking. Ryan is obviously what we think, uh, down to fight one of our UK guys in Luke Campbell. Can you tell us how you think that plays out? Uh, I think it's a great fight. Um, you know, Luke Campbell's a, a, a gold medalist himself. He has a lot of experience, and he did uh, he did fairly well with uh, Lomachenko. So, uh, you know, he's uh, no pushover. He's no easy fight. So, I think that that makes for a great fight. Uh, just gotta wait to see how how it turns out. Will you be secretly warning Ryan to win because you know it, it tees up perhaps a fight for you that, from an American perspective, is is larger. Um. I, I guess so, but I mean, but, you know, whoever wins, I would want whoever uh, out of that fight too. And how does it map out from here? Let's talk about the next couple of years. So, you want to be a world champion. You know, time's on your side. You're not old yet. You've got age on your side. How do you map out these next couple of years to make sure the journey goes smoothly and you do end up as a world champion? I mean, just keep winning, you know, just keep getting better, keep working hard. Um, I know boxing, you know, you got to be patient, um, especially in this division right now. But uh, I think uh, just working hard and, and just still getting those wins and, um, you know, hopefully become world champion in, in my division. And then later I'll move up in 140 and become a ch one champion at 140.